السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today is our lecture about transdermal drug delivery uh, systems uh, During this lecture we will discuss several points uh, So by the end you should be able to define transdermal drug delivery and explain the advantages and disadvantages of uh, such route of administration. <clears throat> you should be able to describe different types of trans transdermal drug delivery systems, explain the factors that affect drug permeation through skin, describe mechanisms of drug absorption through skin, explain the characteristics of drugs that are suitable for transdermal drug delivery, describe the composition and types of transdermal patches, different generations of transdermal drug delivery systems, and Techniques used to enhance transdermal drug delivery. Okay, so first we start with the definition. We don't have a standardized definition, but we have several definitions by different uh, pharmacopoeias of uh, sources. Uh, they are almost similar when it comes to defining what is transdermal drug delivery system. Uh, The only difference is in USP. USP make it more flexible definition that it didn't specify that transdermal delivery system is restricted to the patch type. But WHO technical report series, European Pharmacopeia, they defined the transdermal drug delivery system as a patch. Okay. So for WHO, they said it is a medicated adhesive patch for a device. So this one is more uh, flexible also. That is applied to the skin to deliver a specific dose of medication through the skin and into bloodstream for systemic effect. European pharmacopoeia is restricted to uh, transdermal patch. Transdermal patch containing one or more active substances which are intended to be applied to the skin to deliver the active substances for systemic effect. But for USP, didn't specify anything, just a dosage form containing a drug substance or a matrix of drug substances intended to be applied into intact skin to deliver the drugs through the skin for systemic distribution. So the, mo the common here, the basic things when we want to define transdermal drug delivery are two things mainly, that the system is applied to the skin, okay, applied to the skin, applied to the skin. And the second thing you have to remember is it is not to produce a local effect. It is intended to produce a systemic effect. So it is for systemic distribution. So the drug will be absorbed through the skin, that's why we call it transdermal, and will reach the systemic circulation and distributed to different body parts and will exert a systemic effect. So it is a replacement for injection, oral drug administration, and other routes that uh, utilized for systemic drug effects. Okay? So let's have a a look on the what is the meaning of transdermal drug uh, delivery when we say drug transdermal drug delivery means that the drug will pass through the skin layers till it will reach to the systemic circulation as it will be absorbed from capillary vessels in the skin and reach the systemic circulation okay so What is transdermal delivery? Means the drug will be after released, after being released from the delivery system, it will diffuse into the different layers of the skin, stratum corneum, uh, dermis, epidermis, and dermis. And here you have the capillary in the dermis layer. So the drug will be taken to the capillaries and then will reach, will be taken to the blood stream. Okay, so it will be distributed to the whole body. And will reach the affected area and exert the intended effect. Okay, 
So how this passage occurs, the main mechanism is by private diffusion, by, by passive diffusion. Okay, it's not an active process, not uh, active uh, carrier mediated. It is a passive diffusion of the drug through these layers, um, mainly. Okay, if there is no other mechanism in the transdermal drug delivery system, so it passes by passive diffusion. Okay. So in this kind of absorption mechanism, the drug molecules dissolve in the lipid matrix of the stratum corneum and diffuse through the skin layers till they reach the systemic circulation. Since the process is passive, it mainly depends on the characteristics of skin and the physical chemical properties of the drug. Okay? So the most important, if it is a passive diffusion based mechanism, is to choose drugs with suitable uh, physical properties okay so how the drug is going to pass through these layers usually it will pass by one of three routes okay one two we have three routes for passage of drugs they pass by this or this or this or all of them okay usually it will be a uh, uh, the net effect is passing by these three, three routes. So the first one is intercellular. So it means it will pass between the cells. Intercellular means it will cross between in the spaces between the cells of the skin layers. The second, so this pathway involves drug passing between the cells of stratum corneum and then moving through the other layers of the skin. And this is the most common route for transdermal drug delivery. This is the most common route. However, there will be portions or parts of the drug that, that may pass through uh, the cells themselves. We call it either transcellular or intracellular. You have both are synonymous. So you can say transcellular pathway or you can say it is intracellular pathway. Here, the drug molecules pass directly through the cells, not between them. Uh, they pass through the cells of stratum corneum and then move through other layers of skin. The third pathway is, or third route, is transappendigial route. So it passes through the appendages of the skin, and as we know, the appendages of the skin are the hair and sweat glands. Okay, so it will go through the hair, hair uh, follicles, uh, and then will pass to uh, pass through the other layers or go through the uh, sweat. Uh, glands and pass to the other leaves. So the drug passing through the hair follicles and sweat glands, this is less common than the other roots, whether transcellular or intercellular. Okay? So most of the drug will pass by this route, some will pass by the other route, transcellular, and then later will pass through the appendageal pathway. Um, in order for the drug to reach the systemic circulation, it should have a good permeability, good skin permeability, okay, or good skin penetration ability. So this permeability of the skin to drugs is actually can be expressed by equation. This uh, rate of permeation of the drug across the skin can be expressed as an equation stating that dq divided by dt equal to ps cd minus cdr when you say q here we talk about the quantity of drug that pass through the skin d is a fraction so the fraction of a drug that passed through the skin in a fraction of time so a quantity divided by time we are talking about rate quantity divided by time we're talking about rate here we're talking about the rate of permeation okay this is it is equal to permeability coefficient so this is drug uh, specific multiplied by the difference between the drug in the donor and recipient compartment concentration of drug in the donor and recipient compartments so what are the donor and recipient compartments imagine that you have uh, in lab, imagine that in the lab,
have a cylinder Okay, sorry. So imagine that you have a cylinder in the lab, and then you have a batch that you put here on this support, and then down here you have a liquid, and up there you have your patch okay so Imagine you put your batch here, okay? So you have a drug in this batch. This compartment, we call it the receiving compartment. And the batch that contains the drug, we call it, we call it a donor compartment, okay? So in order for the rate of permeation to be fast, you need a concentration gradient between donor and receiving compartment. The difference in concentration should be high. Uh, it is a first order process, same like when we discussed in uh, absorption, when we say absorption is a first order process, this means that the drug to pass from the GIT to the blood, the rate of absorption will depend on the difference in concentration between GIT and GIT and the uh, blood. So same thing also here. The different to for, in order for the drug to permeate and uh, to maintain a high rate of permeation, then the difference between the concentration of drug in the donor compartment, donor that the one that will give the drug. This is the patch, and the receiving compartment means across the skin itself should be high. Depends on the difference in concentration between both. Okay. Uh, for the same patient with the same condition, there will be other factors also that may affect or uh, the permeation rate. For example, increase in skin temperature, several factors like exposure to heat, uh, radiation of the sun, having fever, a high vascularization uh, due to so blood flow increase in the number of capillaries. This will all also increase the skin permeability. So there are factors affecting permeability. Some of them are physiological and some of them are physical chemical properties of the drug itself, which will affect the partition, uh, the permeation uh, or permeability coefficient of the drug and also the, diff the remaining amount of the drug in the donor compartment, which is the batch. Okay. So what are those physical chemical properties and other conditions also that will affect transdermal permeability? Number one is molecular weight of the drug. Usually drugs with low molecular weight, not, increase, not more than uh, about 400 Dalton is, uh, is ideal for transdermal drug delivery, 400 or 500 at maximum. So the molecular weight of the drug molecule is a critical factor that influences transdermal permeability. Smaller molecules can more easily pass through the skin than larger molecules. So 
A good candidate for transdermal drug delivery is it's a drug with low molecular weight. The second thing is the concentration of the drug in the transdermal delivery system can affect the permeability. As we mentioned, higher concentrations of the drug increase the driving force. They create a, a permeability or a gradient or concentration gradient. So increase the penetration of the drug into skin. What we saw in our equation that it depends on the difference in, uh, in concentration between uh, drug in the donor and recipient uh, compartments. Okay. okay. The other factor is pH condition. So the extent of dissociation in case of ionic drugs and their transdermal permeability depends on pH conditions of the skin surface, surface as well as the drug delivery system pH. Okay, so for example, if adrenaline and scopolamine, the flux through the skin, transdermal flux means permeability also increase with increasing pH up to 1.2 higher than their pKa values. Another factor that may affect permeability is the skin thickness. So if you apply the patch on an area with a thicker skin, the rate of uh, the permeability is less. While in thinner skin, usually there is generally more permeability to the drug compared to thicker skin. Also skin integrity, if the skin has a problem like uh, there is a a problem with the stratum corneum and the underlying epidermis, like for example, broken skin, damaged, inflamed, uh, diseased skin, the permeability usually increase compared to healthy skin. Formulation factors also affect the delivery through the skin and, and permeability, uh, like the type of adhesive used, the presence of enhancers for penetration, uh, and the method of drug release can all affect drug permeation through skin. Last factor we talk about is lipophilicity and hypo hydrophilicity. Uh, usually lipophilic molecules has better permeability through the skin. Uh, uh, so they are more permeable compared to hydroph hydrophilic molecules. Uh, the transdermal permeability coefficient usually increase with increasing the partition coefficient has linear dependency, linear relationship. You double the uh, partition coefficient, you double the, uh, the permeability coefficient. Okay, so which value is a good value for a drug that we want to see if we can use for transdermal drug delivery or no? Usually, for the earliest types of uh, transdermal del drug delivery systems, most of drugs uh, applied were having partition of fish, uh, coefficient uh, above four, okay? But in general, if it is one above one is okay, you can use. It's generally, generally you need a partition coefficient one or greater to be suitable to be formulated in the form of transdermal drug delivery system, okay? So basically, what was the need? Why developers or formulation scientists thought about using a transdermal drug delivery system? What advantages? What are the advantages that make it a good option? Uh, number one is that by applying through the skin, you avoid the first pass effect. So if there is a drug that have significant first pass effect metabolized by this pathway, and then we use uh, through transdermal drug delivery systems, then bioavailability is increased and the dose required will be less. A lower daily dose is required. Second thing, you eliminate one of the variables that will cause uh, variability in pharmacokinetics of the drug. So you reduce also the overall variability between patients and even between patients, enter patient variability and uh, among the patient himself. Okay, 
from time to time for between different doses. Um, it's very easy to stop the drug administration by only removing the patch. So that is also another thing compared to injection or uh, oral drug uh, delivery. When the dose is taken, it's difficult to be removed or recovered. Uh, there are factors that make patients more compliant to this kind of drug delivery systems as it is painless, no pain compared to injections, for example. It's non-invasive. You don't need to break barriers in the body and so on, just a patch to stick to the skin. Easy to use. And other than this, they are mainly for sustained drug release. So also frequency of administration is reduced. So then patients may have no problem complying with such dosage forms. Okay. The good thing is that since it is for sustained drug release, drug levels can be maintained in the systemic circulation within the therapeutic window for a prolonged period of time. And administration is very easy. Just remove the liner, stick or attach to your skin. So self-administration is possible. There are only a few disadvantages that limit their use. Number one, cannot be used for all kinds of drugs. As we mentioned, there are some physical chemical properties of drugs that must be available in order to be able to compound it or formulate it in this form. So it is limited only to potent drug molecules, not every drug. Drugs must be low. Uh, some drugs uh, may be uh, causing local irritation or sensitization, they cannot also be used. So the drug used must not be locally irritating or sensitizing. Drug or drug formulation may cause skin irritation or sensitization due to the excipients themselves. So we have also to select among the excipients. We have to test also the formulation and look for any uh, irritation. Okay, so this will limit our choices for the excipients. Uh, also not suitable, same as when we discuss in the prolonged release uh, tablets, also for this system, also it's not suitable for drugs with very short half-life, okay? And those also subject to very significant first pass effect. We don't have one type of transdermal drug delivery systems. There was advancement of this kind of delivery systems over, times, over time. It started with some simple forms and then uh, improvements or developments continued till we reach. So we moved from first to fourth generation. When we talk about first generation, we are talking usually about simple system that contains uh, that have is in the form of a patch that releases the drug slowly over a period of several days, from day to several days. It is a diffusion-based system usually, so we didn't put any mechanism for improving the drug penetration through the skin in this first generation type, but it depends mainly on the physical chemical properties of drug molecules to penetrate the skin. Okay, so mainly the main thing done here is to use some mechanism to control the release, but once the drug released, how it will penetrate, it depends on the drug characteristics. Usually this one consists of a drug reservoir, adhesive layer, and the backing layer, uh, limited, they have limited ability to deliver drugs, deliver drugs that uh, have uh, hydrophilic drugs, for example, or very poorly soluble, or have high molecular weight, okay, or have high molecular weight, uh, and they require a large surface area to be affected. Usually their size is bigger than the next generations. Then the second generation came, and the main characteristic of this generation that it can deliver drugs with a wide range of physical chemical properties and molecular weights. So the evolution of second generation means that scientists have found some uh, uh, ways to improve drug permeability and they have some ways to include drugs that cannot be included by first generation TDD technology. Okay. Uh, so, what are the uh, 
techniques or what are the methods they use to improve permeability. They use chemical enhancers, they use nanocarriers, nanotechnology. They use external energy sources to improve drug delivery, something like electroporation, iontophoresis. You may apply a very, uh, what do you call it, very weak, for example, electric current that will improve the drug penetration through the skin, one of the methods. Okay? And because of this improved uh, ability to deliver the drug through the skin, they have a smaller size compared to the first generation. Uh, their design is more flexible. Okay, uh, so they are more uh, comfortable to wear. Um, then another development arises, which is the third generation. Uh, this one started to involve some minimally invasive transdermal drug delivery uh, methods. Um, so there will be some destruction of limited areas, small areas in the stratum corneum, so that there will be epidermal disruption and then uh, that is still clinically safe but allow more drugs to pass. So here even became possible to use uh, or to include hydrophilic drugs and macromolecules like uh, proteins for example in this kind of drug delivery systems. These invasive methods include high power energy modalities like radio frequency, laser, ultrasound, and microneedles, okay? And then came the fourth generation. Fourth generation is a smart type that include a feedback mechanism. Uh, so it, it's not only releasing the drug, but it has a sensor that will measure the property that we want to modify or the physiological parameter that we want to modify. And based on this, it will adjust the drug release, okay? So it is designed to be smart. There will be systematic control of the administered dose based on an accurate real-time observation of the patient's physiological parameter to determine the progression of disease and efficacy of the drug. So here you can see in this uh, figure, we have the four generations expressed. The first generation, you just load a patch, mainly depends on natural diffusion of drug, which is dependent on the skin condition and the drug physicochemical properties. Second generation, we started to have some external stimuli to improve the drug penetration through the skin, like iontophoresis, electroporation, like uh, uh, chemical enhancers, so we can classify them into chemical and physical enhancers. Uh, they will actuate uh, diffusion of drug through the skin. Third generation, some have uh, invasive, minimally invasive techniques like what you see in the shape. This is a micro needle that contains the drug and allow drug release into the skin. So since it is piercing the skin, can deliver even drugs that normally will not pass through the skin layers, like hydrophilic drugs, can deliver vaccines, can deliver proteins, okay? Big molecules can be delivered through this technology. The fourth is the smart one. So here you can see like an electronic device, very small, have ships it as you see here. So it has a probes or sensors that will measure some property, some physiological parameter, and then same times have like micro needles or tools to deliver the drug into skin. The chipset is the one that depends, have feedback mechanism depending on the value. For example, we want to deliver insulin, like insulin pumps, as an example. So you want to deliver insulin. This will measure the uh, blood glucose. So depending on the blood glucose level, insulin dose will be uh, correct uh, will be adjusted by the chipset so it can can control the rate of uh, administration of insulin by this ins device so your the blood glucose high give more insulin once blood uh, blood glucose is low then stop insulin blood, blood glucose is okay normal like needs minimal amounts of insulin to maintain okay so it is a smart device and this is more explanation for type uh, fourth generation. For the fourth generation, you can see a device, for example, can be worn on uh, uh, a part of the body. It can be uh, on the hand, can be fixed to the abdomen, skin, 
Okay, different devices have different locations. It will measure some physiological parameters, depends. For example, you want it to control body temperature, so it will uh, to control fever, then to measure body temperature. You want antihypertensive drug, then should be a tool to uh, measure blood pressure. You want it to control blood glucose, then there will be a method to improve, uh, to, to measure blood glucose, and then based on this, the chipset will uh, control the rate of release of the drug can use uh, some methods to improve uh, the drug delivery into skin like microneedle or iontophoresis, okay? These are all physical means, it's not chemical means, okay? So they use physical means for controlling drug delivery. Here are examples of uh, some uh, transdermal drug delivery systems that are already in the market and has been approved by FDA. Variety of drugs has been used like scopolamine, Transderm scope. This one is for motion sickness. Uh, nitroglycerin, which is used for angina pectoris. Clonidine, using used for hypertension. Estradiol for menopausal symptoms, postmenopausal symptoms. Fentanyl for chronic pain, like for example patients with cancer, with uh, orthopedic surgeries, and so on. Nicotine, which is very common nowadays, also used for nicotine replacement therapy uh, to help smoking cessation. So you can see a variety of uh, drugs that have been formulated um, in the form of transdermal delivery systems and they are already in the market. Okay, so now after this introduction about the definition about factors affecting permeation to the skin and advantage, disadvantage and what are the different types of uh, the, uh, generations and how uh, it, uh, the, the design is, was uh, advanced through time. Uh, now we talk about the basic design. If you want to formulate a transdermal delivery system, so uh, we focus here on the first or second generation, maximal second generation, that is, may contain some enhancers, uh, chemical enhancers. We talk about the main design, how we design it. So design is usually the basic design, as you see in this uh, figure, uh, it, it is composed mainly of uh, about four, four, lay, four com uh, components, okay? So just we ignore, uh, okay, these four components are mainly, number one, you need a drug, and the drug will be, uh, we need it for prolonged release, so it will be in a matrix containing maybe polymer that can act as rate control polymer. So mainly, this one will have a drug matrix, drug polymer matrix. Here the drug is will give the effect. The polymer is the one that will control the release of the drug. Okay, so we just ignore separating layer. We talk about the second thing is we have uh, adhesive film. Adhesive film will be um, in order to make the skin, uh, make the patch adhere to the skin. And then there is a backing layer. This is the body of the transdermal delivery patch. This is some somewhat firm polymer or plastic material that will be as the container or the body of the transdermal delivery patch. So you have transdermal the body or the backing layer and then you put inside the drug matrix and then around it concentric or just on top of it there will be adhesive and then you have to cover this adhesive to be covered till will be used so there will be something called peel off uh, uh, release protective layer or a liner okay we call it release liner so Almost all transdermal patch designs, this is the basic design containing four layers. Uh, you have a drug stored in reservoir. So the one compartment is the reservoir containing the drug polymer matrix. Okay. From one side, you may have also an impermeable membrane uh, backing, impermeable backing. And there is adhesive also on the other side. Okay, some designs employ drug dissolved in a liquid or gel-based reservoir. Some others will have uh, 
a solid polymer matrix containing the drug. Okay, so you may have it in a liquid, semi-solid, or a solid form when it comes to the the drug reservoir or the drug polymer matrix. Uh, the especially those are liquid or semi-liquid, they can permit the use of liquid chemical enhancers that will improve the permeability of the drug through skin. Uh, some other simpler designs may contain only three layers, may contain only uh, two layers, okay? So it depends also. If, if you are not using polymer, then in replacement, you will have semi-permeable membrane. So instead of drug reservoir, you will have uh, our drug with polymer. Uh, if, if you have a drug reservoir, it may contain drug and polymer. Uh, then you don't need to use semi-permeable membrane. If you have drug reservoir containing drug only, then the rate control will be through the use of semi-permeable membrane. Okay, there are many uh, diagrams showing different uh, different designs. Oh, I will show you another one in the second uh, slide. So sometimes also we don't use uh, drug reservoir. The drug is in the adhesive, and the adhesive itself will act as a rate control polymer. So in this case, we can have only two layers. So we have four, three layers, and we have uh, two layer systems. So this one, maybe you can see here, drug reservoir, only you have drug, not mix it with polymer. Then you have to control the rate through using a release membrane. This will be between the skin and between the, the drug reservoir. You have the backing uh, membrane, Okay, this is the body of the or the container of the patch and you have adhesive so that the patch will stick to the skin and before use there will be always a piece of paper we call it liner that will protect the adhesive from drying up or from coming in uh, adhering to the, the package of uh, the transdermal patch you just remove it before use okay so the composition is mainly using maybe some of them may be present, some may not, depending on how many layers are there. So the composition is mainly polymer, drug. We may use permeation enhance enhancers, especially if we are talking about the second generation uh, devices. Uh, we may use pressure sensitive. Uh, there will be pressure sensitive adhesives in all kinds. Uh, backing membrane that will be there mostly and then a release liner will be there in all and some other experience may be used okay so for these ingredients uh, there are some general requirements and they are almost similar to many other dosage forms we want stable ingredients that will not also interact with each other compatible and non-reactive same as when you study in pre-formulation when we talk that part of the pre uh, in the formulation design in pre-formulation, we find information about the, the, our drug and then uh, including reactivity also as well as physical properties and chemical properties. And then when we start to make uh, develop the formulation, we have to uh, study the compatibility between drug and excipients, right? So same thing here also. Uh, ingredients should be compatible and not reactive with the drug, so it will not accelerate its degradation and will make our... Uh, uh, dosage form unstable. It should also provide effective release of the drug throughout the device. Should be easily fabricated to the desired product. Ingredients and their degradation products must be non-toxic and non-antigenic to the host. So it, it should not cause toxicity, irritation, okay, uh, to the host. Uh, we can take a five minutes break, then we continue. So let's talk first about the, the polymers used with the drug to control the rate of uh, release. Okay. So uh, 
Usually, if we if we have a kind this kind of uh, not using just a drug reservoir that containing only drugs, but containing a matrix of polymer uh, that uh, including the drug dispersed inside. Um, Okay, so variety of polymers can be used as a real as a rate control polymers, and these include uh, either natural or synthetic polymers. This is one classification. Sometimes we classify them based on their hydrophilicity, hydrophobicity. We say uh, hydrophilic polymers, hydrophobic polymers. Okay, so there are different classifications for polymers. But in general, if we classify them based on natural and synthetic, we have variety of polymers we can choose among. We have cellulose derivatives with different hydrophilicities uh, and hydrophobicity. We have HPMC, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose, uh, sodium carboxy uh, methyl cellulose, cellulose acetate methyl cellulose, ethyl cellulose. Okay. Uh, we have other polymers like gelatin, chitosan. Carboxymethyl guar, which is a derivative of guar gum, and sodium alginate uh, that can uh, also be used as a rate controlled polymer. Synthetic polymers, including polyvinyl alcohol, polyethylene glycol, polyvinyl pyrrolidine, uh, polymethyl acrylate, hydrogel, ethylene vinyl acetate copolymer, and ethyl vinyl acetate. So we have a lot of polymers we can choose among. Uh, not necessarily that you use one type of polymer when you want to develop any uh, any drug, uh, sustained drug release uh, dosage form, whether tablets or even here. You can use blend of polymers. You can blend use a blend of polymers. Sometimes you you blend the hydrophilic with hydrophobic polymer, different ratios, and then you study the effect on drug release and you choose the 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 blend with the ratio that uh, achieve the targeted uh, drug release rate that you want. Okay? So this one it comes to the polymers. Uh, when it comes to the drug, as we said, not all drugs, especially the first and second generation uh, transdermal drug delivery systems, not all of drugs can be used for, um, for transdermal drug delivery because there are factors that may limit the drug permeation. So. If we choose a drug, the drug should be uh, having low molecular weight, usually not more than 400 daltons. Some other references mentioning 500 daltons. So maximum, the molecular weight for a drug to be suitable for transdermal drug delivery system without assisted uh, permeability method, then should be uh, molecular weight as about four to 500 dal uh, dalton at maximum, okay? To allow for easier penetration through the scan. When it comes to lipophilicity or hydrophilicity, um, the drug should be in uh, dissolved or be easy, it can be dissolved in a soluble form in order to go through the skin. But to penetrate the skin, it must be lipo, uh, high, lipophilic. Hydrophilic drugs have poor penetration. And most of the drugs that have been used, especially in the first generation transdermal drug delivery systems, their partition, the log, uh, had a log partition uh, has a partition coefficient of 10 uh, 10 to the power 4 so the log is log partition coefficient log p is about 4 4 and above okay not only one as we mentioned in the previous slides so the best partition best permeability is with partition coefficient for, uh, above log p above um, is 4 and above still 1 and above 1 up till 3 can be used especially with the aid of um, enhancers. Uh, these drugs also have should have low dose requirement. We, then we can have to use potent drugs. We cannot use drugs that you need a big dose because there is limited ability. The capacity of the transdermal drug delivery system is limited. It, you cannot put one gram in, in this one, but usually we put micrograms or two milligram amounts. Okay, So the drug should have a low dose requirement. Uh, because the amount that can be delivered through the skin is limited by the surface area of the patch itself. The patch cannot carry big amount and the drug dose should also be within a range that can be safely de delivered through the skin without causing irritation or damage. Okay. 
Uh, another requirement for the drug is to have good skin permeation characteristic. So meaning that it can pass through the stratum corneum and into the underlying layers of the skin. So it should have a good permeability coefficient. It should have a good permeability coefficient. The drugs also must be stable in the transdermal delivery system and have a long shelf life. So we should use a stable drugs. And uh, same time, this drug, uh, we have to blend with excipients that are compatible with it and will not affect its stability. The drug should lack skin irritation. It will not cause irritation upon application to the skin. And uh, we, this, we, we include drugs in the transdermal drug delivery systems in order to reduce the frequency of administration. So if we require a low daily dosage frequency, uh, if we want a low uh, dosing frequency for uh, this drug, then it is suitable to be used for transdermal drug delivery. Okay. Uh, third uh, component <coughs> of these systems is the permeation enhancers. And permeation enhancer is uh, usually classified into two or we can say three classes. There are mainly three classes. Chemical permeation enhancers, physical permeation enhancers, techniques like electrophoresis or electroporation or ionophoresis, and other methods like nanocarriers, like nanocarriers. So we have mainly three types of permeation enhancers, physical, chemical, and na uh, nanocarriers, okay? So when we talk about chemical permeation enhancers, they are compounds which promote skin permeability by altering the skin as a barrier with different mechanisms we'll mention in a coming slide. Uh, they will alter it to the flux of the desired, uh, alter the skin as a barrier and make it uh, um, amenable or permeable to the flux of desired penetrant, which is our drug desired penetrant is the drug, <clears throat> okay? Uh, can be classified into solvents, surfactants, miscellaneous chemicals. Solvents, a lot of solvents can be used like ethanol, dimethyl sulfoxide. They will be in the formulation in that transdermal drug delivery system itself, okay? Uh, propylene glycol, polyethylene glycol, essential oils, a lot of oils can be used. They are all enhance the penetration of, <clears throat> of the drugs. Okay, and then surfactants like sodium lauryl sulfate, non-ionic surfactants like spans and tweens, pluronic, they are all can be used. Some other uh, chemicals like diethyl, diethylene glycol, monoethyl ether or urea can also be used. Okay, um, nanocarriers may include different types of nanocarriers like liposomes, neosomes, uh, protons, ferrosome gel, and also we can use pro-drug approach. Pro-drug approach means that if there is a problem with, for example, solubility, our drug is hydrophilic, so penetration would be weak. You can prepare a pro-drug, hasn't doesn't have effect, and this pro-drug prepared in modif we modified the structure of the parent drug or original drug to be more lipophilic, so it will have better penetration. Once we'll pass the skin into the skin, then it will be, say, hydrolyzed or this, um, it will be uh, metabolized and provide the active drug. So this is the pro-drug approach, okay? And they are also classified based, based on their skin irritation into benign and skin irritant enhancers. So some enhancers like the solvents like DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide, Dimethyl formamide, oxazolidine, oxazolidinone, they are uh, irritant compared to others like fatty acid, urea, and pyrrolidine. Okay, so that uh, usually uh, we tend to use chemical enhancers that are not irritant to the skin. Okay, so now what is the mechanism? How this, when we talk here, we talk about mainly permeation enhancers, uh, chemical permeation enhancers. In this slide, we are talking about mechanism of per chemical chemical permeation enhancers okay so we're talking about chemical permeation enhancers 
So the mechanism by which they uh, alter the permeability of the skin include uh, several changes they may introduce. Uh, for example, uh, altering lipids. Okay, they may alter the lipids of uh, the skin. So the uh, enhancers either incorporate into lipid lamella to loosen their packing and fluidize the lipid chains. Uh, they form enhancer rich more permeable domains in the lipid lamella or extract the lipids. Okay, so the drug can pass easily. They may alter the proteins in the skin. The enhan enhancers may modify the conformation of keratin to cause swelling and increased hydration or act on the uh, corneal dysmosomes to alter cohesion between corneocytes. They lose in the okay, cohesion between the corneocytes. So they lose in the barrier that uh, impede uh, or reduce the penetration of drugs. They may cause partitioning of the drug also from the formulation into the stratum corneum by altering the solvent nature of this tissue. They may enhance the enhanced drug solubility like surfactants when they are used. They increase the concentration of poorly soluble drugs into the vehicle to avoid depletion. Okay, and they may work also by uh, modifying the thermodynamic activity of the drug, like ethanol, for example. Ethanol it, it acts by two different ways. One of them is solvent drag, so it will rapidly permeate the uh, the the skin. And while permeating the skin, it carries the drug with it. So it, it goes, uh, solvent drag means dragging the drug with it into the skin layer. The other way is also rapid evaporation of ethanol. The amount that will evaporate will leave a more very concentrated, super concentrated solution, super saturated state. So it has a great, greater driving force for penetration into the skin. Okay. So the fourth uh, component in drug delivery system is the pressure sensitive adhesive, just an adhesive material that once you apply little pressure, it will stick to the skin. So it firmly attaches the transdermal drug delivery system to the skin upon application of light pressure. Easily, it should be easily removable without leaving a residue or inflicting pain. So. The choice of material, including some measures like how strong it attaches and how easy it can be removed. Okay, many synthetic materials can be used like polyacrylates, polyisobutylene, and silicones. They used to form the adhesive tape. Uh, backing membrane usually uh, should have a desired characteristics like being flexible, has a good tensile strength, means that is strong enough. Will, that will uh, can can tolerate some moderate force will not be broken easily and should has low water vapor transmission rates means will be occlusive okay so being occlusive will help increase skin hydration and greater skin permeability uh, materials that are used mainly plastic materials like uh, plastic laminate maybe supported by uh, aluminium layer, so aluminized plastic laminate, or maybe polyvinyl alcohol, PVA. Okay. The last thing is the release liner. Release liner, sure you know about it. If you buy anything that even the, the hangers that you fix through uh, with adhesive, uh, already come in with uh, attached adhesive to it, will be always covered with a thin paper, greasy paper okay that you can you should remove before you want to attach your uh, hanger to the wall or to the door right so it is the same thing there is a release liner this is a protective for the, the transdermal drug delivery system patch we just remove prior to the application remove it and then <clears throat> put the, the batch or uh, put the patch on your skin and uh, apply light pressure then it will stick okay uh, consists of a base layer, which may be non-occlusive, usually paper fabric, or maybe occlusive like polyethylene or, or polyvinyl chloride. Uh, and 
may have a release coating layer of silicon. Uh, this coating layer usually non-sticky, so it will not uh, stick to the adhesive, so you can remove it easily. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, coming to the types, different designs of transdermal drug delivery system, as we said, it, the mostly or the basic one may have uh, four layers, but you may have other designs like having two layers, three layers, or even one layer. So, these are the types of transdermal drug delivery systems. Okay. So the first one is single layer drug in adhesive. This is very simple design. So now the polymer is the adhesive material itself that control the rate. So, we don't need reservoir, polymer, control membrane, nothing. We just have a single layer drug and adhesive system characterized by inclusion of the drug directly within the skin contacting adhesive. The adhesive have the drug and it controls the release of the drug. This transdermal system design in this one, adhesive is not only served to affix the system, but also formulation foundation containing drug and all the excipients under a single backing film. So then what else do you need? You need the backing, the body of the patch, uh, the patch and you need the liner. Okay. And this liner will be removed before application into the skin. So Two layers will remain the backing and then containing the adhesive that contain all the excipients and the drug. Okay, the release of the rate of release of a drug from this type of system is dependent on the diffusion across the skin. We may have multi-layer drug in adhesive. So here it is a still the drug will be in the adhesive. The drug will be in the adhesive. However, we don't have only one layer of the adhesive, we have several layers, multi-layer of the adhesive. So we may have, liner will be always there, backing membrane will be always there. In between, we have, for example, in this design, we have two layers of adhesive and we have membrane in the middle between them. Each layer of adhesive contains the excipients and the drug. So this is similar to the single layer drug and adhesive in that the drug is incorporated directly into the adhesive. However, we have multi-layer encompass either the addition of a membrane between two distinct drug and adhesive layers, or we add, we add multiple drug and adhesive layers under a single backing film. Okay, it offers more consistent and predictable drug delivery rate, allows for a higher drug loading capacity, can take more drugs, which can reduce the frequency of patch changes required for therapeutic dosing. So, uh, one patch can be used for several days. Another design is the drug in reservoir adhesive. Here you have backing as usual and liner. Always in all designs you have a backing and you have a liner. Here you have adhesive that doesn't contain the drugs, but you have a drug in reservoir and you control the rate of release of the drug by a membrane. So there is a membrane that controls the rate of release of the drug. So the reservoir transdermal system is designed, uh, design is characterized by the inclusion of a liquid compartment containing a drug solution or suspension separated from the release liner by a semi-permeable membrane and adhesive. The adhesive component here, the function is just to attach the device to the skin. It may take different shapes. Adhesive may be uh, one, it's uh, all over. It will be continuous layer between the membrane and the release liner, or maybe concentric configuration, okay? So if you look at your uh, 
if you look at the uh, at your batch if you look at your batch then you will have from the for example from the bottom from the side of the adhesive the patch is like round or disc concentric means that this ring is the adhesive just around this is the concentric one the adhesive is just around it okay this is the adhesive so what is here in the middle in the middle you will see the next layer, what is the next layer? The membrane, semi-permeable membrane. But if you are talking about continuous layer of adhesive, then we look from the bottom, you will see that this is all adhesive. Okay? This is all adhesive. That's the difference. So, uh, concentric, uh, concentric means like a ring at the circumference of uh, the bottom, of the uh, transdermal drug delivery uh, patch okay uh, the fourth one is drug matrix and adhesive the matrix system design here is characterized by the inclusion of semi-solid matrix containing drug solution or suspension which is in direct contact with the release liner uh, the component responsible for skin adhesion is incorporated in an overlay and form a concentric configuration around the semi-solid. So here you have a drug matrix, you have polymer with it, okay, you have different forms, and then you have a backing, the adhesive is around, is concentric, okay, and then liner. So when we say adhesive, this arrow doesn't mean that adhesive on top. No, the adhesive is around. The adhesive is around. Okay. So once you remove the liner, again you will get a uh, you will see the adhesive like a ring. Okay. So the adhesive will be like a ring surrounding the. Uh, drug transdermal drug delivery system from the bottom can be seen it will attach to it will attach to the skin okay so then talking about enhancement of penetration we should mention about nanocarriers that used in transdermal drug delivery system we have different types we have those that take the form of vesicles those that are uh, take the form of like uh, nanoparticles we call them polymeric nanoparticles and those that are globules, like nanoemulsions. Okay, so vesicles means you have a vesicle, you have a sac, you have a capsule that contains the drug inside, or in the capsule layer itself, okay, and have liquid inside. But if you talk about nanoemulsion, we're talking about a globule of oil, for example, oil emulsified and dispersed in a uh, in water or aqua solvent. Okay. When we talk about polymeric nanoparticles, means you have a polymer that is divided, dispersed in very small particles of nano size, and they will contain the drug in their matrix. Okay, these are the different types. Vesicles examples like liposomes, transferosomes, ethosomes. Polymeric nanoparticles can be formed from most of the polymers we mentioned previously when we talked about the polymers used in rail con rate control. You can make polymeric nanoparticles from chitosan, from alginate. Okay, from uh, PLGA, so many polymers can be used. And nanoemulsions, then you just need to, uh, uh, as you already uh, prepared in the previous semester, you just need a strong technique like, uh, for example, uh, solication using a probe syndicator with the aid of surfactant, and then you can disperse your oil in uh, nano size globules from 100 to 1000 nanometers okay you can make also oil in water or water in oil so these are the kinds of vesicles you have uh, uh, different types liposomes is something like the 
you will study more in detail in, 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 detail, in more detail with Dr. Mulham anyway. So you have bilayer that uh, mimic the cell membrane. Uh, phospholipids are usually used. When ethanol is, uh, is included, also we call them ethosomes. Okay, we can have some ingredients or lipids that will increase the flexibility of, of them. So we can prepare transferosomes, uh, use non-ionic surfactants, uh, make new neosomes. Usually these shapes have better flexibility. They can pass easily through the skin layers. They have good penetration to the skin, especially when we talk about ethosomes, transferosomes. They have a lot of applications in transdermal uh, skin delivery. Okay, liposome was the first form that was made, and then these are modifications. So mainly we use phospholipids that will form a bilayer like the cell membrane. So uh, if your drug is, there is water, aqua score included in the middle. So it can carry either hydrophilic or hydrophobic drugs. If your drug is hydrophobic, it will be here in this uh, uh, phospholipid bilayer in the middle because here we have the, uh, the lipo, lipophilic chains. So this is lipophilic part. If it is a hydrophilic drug, it will be inside here in the aqueous core. Okay. So what is the function of nanocarriers in transdermal drug delivery system? Nanocarriers will encapsulate drugs. So they protect them from degradation and increase their bioavailability. Protect them from degradation means they improve their stability. Okay. They can protect the drug from degradation or oxidation. They improve the stability and shelf life. When we talk about improving their bioavailability, because they carry them inside and they, uh, they can carry um, drugs that normally will not be, will not have good permeability to the skin. And they can take them through the skin layers and uh, take them into big amounts into the systemic circulation. So improve their bioavailability. Some modifications will be made also to decrease the clearance of nanoparticles by or nanocarriers by the systemic circulation, so they will stay longer time in the uh, blood circulation. Uh, they will also control drug release, uh, designed to re release the drugs over a sustained period, uh, so they reduce the need for frequent dosing. They can be used also for targeted drug delivery if you modify the structure of the nanoparticle with materials that will be attached to specific types of cells then uh, they will specifically go to this kind of cells and enter, okay? They reduce the systemic toxicity as well by targeting specific tissues, uh, if we are doing some drug targeting. And same thing also, because usually permeability is higher, we need smaller doses. And as we mentioned, they enhance the permeation of drugs, so they improve their bioavailability, okay? These are examples of different types of uh, skin uh, patches, uh, four, three, and two layers that are already commercialized. Uh, they are being used for different types of uh, uh, drugs like clonidine, estradiol, okay? uh, nicotine, and nitroglycerin. Let's have an example of the one that has all the, the layers, the four layer patch of clonidine. It, will ha it, it has a backing of polyester and then a reservoir of clonidine with mineral oil, uh, polyisobutylene, colloidal silicon dioxide. Okay, it has microporous polypropylene membrane, so this will control the rate of delivery and adhesive formulation of agents. Okay. And of course, after this, we'll have the liner. So here it is in a liquid form, in a mineral oil, and then the rate control is controlled by, the drug release is controlled by a rate uh, controlling uh, membrane, and uh, there is adhesive formulation, okay? There is a three-layer patch of estradiol produced by Novartis, containing translucent ethylene vinyl alcohol copolymer. Estradiol in a matrix of medical adhesive. So this one is drug in adhesive. Okay. Uh, of polyisobutylene, ethylene vinyl, acetate copolymer. So you have copolymer, two types of poly polymer, mix it together. And polyester release liner removed prior to application. So this one having backing, drug in adhesive, and liner. Okay. 
So several techniques are used in commercial uh, preparations. The last thing we talk about is the characterization of transdermal drug delivery systems. When it comes to uh, quality control tests <clears throat> and during the development as well, so usually stability study will be performed during the development of the dosage form. Skin irritation tests will be performed also so that uh, we will be sure that the preparation is not causing skin irritation. There will be in vitro skin permeation studies. As I mentioned uh, uh, previously, we use a device called France cell diffusion where we have two compartments. We put the transdermal drug delivery system on the upper compartment and the uh, So you have the diffusion cell, you have two compartments, you put the patch here on top, and then you have a diffusion medium, liquid, okay? And then you uh, keep taking samples from this recipient compartment, okay? You take samples from the recipient compartment. And then you study the release of the drug over time from the patch up till uh, into the recipient compartment. Okay, and can do in vitro uh, drug release. So if you talk about in vitro drug release, this is just a normal membrane support. Okay, it doesn't have any membrane. But if you talk about in vitro skin permeation study, then this barrier will be skin. We can just cut animal skin. We get an animal skin and then we put here on the barrier and then we will put on the we put the patch on top, the patch on top. So the drug to reach the lower compartment, recipient compartment, it must pass through the, the skin layer that we put here. So we can do skin permeation or just a drug release in vitro. Okay. When it comes to the quality control tests, usually several tests are applied. One of them is adhesion tests. So how it is done, usually we will peel the, uh, one of them is called peel adhesion test, one is release liner peel test, and there is tag test, three types of test. Peel adhesion test measure the force required to remove a TDS attached to a standard substrate surface. So you can refer to the pharmacopoeia, you can find all the details. So there is a surface, for example, of uh, stainless steel. You attach, and then you want to uh, Measure the force required to remove it after attachment. Should not, of course, be very strong force. Uh, otherwise, if you need to attach very firm to the skin, you will damage your skin to remove it. And then the release liner peel test, it measures the force required to remove the release liner from the adhesive layer of the TDS. So this one, we see how is it easy for the patient to remove the release liner before applying the patch to the skin. Uh, so this is a... Uh, uh, should be also low force and the tag test measures the TDS adhesive TDDS adhesive force using probe or rolling ball uh, it should be once in place should be adhered strong enough to to the skin okay so that it will not be uh, spontaneously uh, fall down from the skin and removed uh, there is a measure for the mechanical strength of the patch itself so this one mainly measure the mechanical strength of the backing, uh, backing layer, and leak test applicable to reservoir or pouch, uh, pouch type TDS, should be pouch, okay? So this one, if it has uh, the drug in a form of a liquid or gel, then we want to measure the leak test. We, we want to confirm that there is no leak from the batch. Uh, also, there will be other tests like drug substance identification, assay, impurities, limit test, that we check that impurities of the drug substance didn't, didn't uh, uh, increase over certain limit. We can uh, also require to do the uniformity of dosage unit when it comes to content, uh, water content. Uh, there will be some in-process testing during the manufacture in the production line itself like visual inspection of the produced units, uh, seal integrity, 
they 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 apply uh, pressure and then they want to check that this pressure doesn't cause the seal to open the seal of the package uh, the package where tdds is inside and can be tested for leakage after they have been manufactured and packaged in their primary packaging material okay last thing we'll talk about is micro needle some detail micro needle drug delivery system that we mentioned that in the third generation uh, transdermal drug delivery system as an aid to improve the drug delivery into the skin. This is a novel drug delivery system. Actually, there are, it's still under development, not so many products in the market. There are only few. And in this one, the drugs are delivered to circulatory system through a micron-sized needles that pierce the superficial layer of skin. Being a micron-sized means that it will be um, comfortable, you will not feel a pain. So even they are developing, it's now to be used even for children that normally will, will fear of taking injections because of the pain and so on. So you can just apply microneedle for them. They, they will not feel pain and they can accept taking the drug. Okay. So by piercing the skin, superficial layer of skin, it will allow the drug diffusion across epidermal layer. Uh, they, they are short and thin microneedle. Okay, deliver it directly to the blood capillary area for active absorption, which helps in avoiding pain. There are different types of microneedle. Can be applied by different types of applicators. Okay, so you have, uh, can be applied by roller, as you see, and the needles on, on, the, cir on the circumference. So once you roll it, it will insert the needles into the skin. Or just like this pen, you can see them at the bottom of the pen, the microneedles. Just apply with pressure, they will be pierce the skin. Or it will be in a form of the patch having microneedles in the bottom. You just press gently on the patch and then the microneedles will pierce the skin and will fix the patch. There are different types like solid, hollow, dissolving and swelling. So in the solid, it will have the matrix of uh, the, the, in solid microneedles, simply make a physical path through which the drug can be absorbed. So, this will be a can, can pierce, can make a uh, what do you call it, um, can make a pathway for the drug. So, you just insert and then remove. Then, if you apply the drug topically, then it, it has a pathway to go through into the skin. Okay. There is a drug coated microneedles which facilitate of delivery of drug coated on the surface of the needle as uh, this drug will enter the skin. There is dissolving the microneedles. Dissolving microneedles, this have a matrix containing the drug. You fix it and then it will dissolve and release the drug. So microneedle inserted, drug will be released as microneedle itself will dissolve. Some are swelling as you see here. So the microneedle inserted and then the interstitial fluid in the tissue absorb it. So it will make a pressure that will cause release of the drug. It will form like a, a hydrogel matrix and then the drug will be released. Hydrogel increase in size also and then drug will be released from the hydrogel. Okay. So there are naturally delivering uh, delivered melting needles which involve drug storage in hollow needles followed by administration. Okay, and there is also microneedle patches and a variety of materials are used for their manufacture. Uh, their manufacture can be from materials like silicon, metals can be used, uh, polymers like PGA and PLA, uh, hydrogels can be made from some, some polymers like polyvinyl pyrimidine, polyethylene glycol, gelatine, chitosan. Okay, this kind of polymers usually form hydrogels, can be used to manufacture the swelling type, for example. So it depends on which type you want to make, then you can select the appropriate material. So the solving, I can make the use PGA and PLA. Uh, hydrogel, I can use PVP, PEG, gelatine, chitosan. Okay, for this one that will hollow, can use metals, for example, like, uh, like stainless steel or titanium, and so on. Okay. This, this is the shape of microneedle the hollow one by, by electron microscope probably. 
by electron microscope. This is the image. You can see the whole one, how it looks like. This is the dissolvable microneedle dissolving with time. And this is the solid one. This is the coated microneedle. Okay. Uh, so I hope I covered the topic. You have some knowledge now about the classical types and also the uh, advances and the new types under development. Okay. So any question? Do you have any question in that content? Anything unclear you want to clarify?